and my only defense will be that I must return to what's mine, not wanting to, but having to become who I was, before I was here, unsure of just how the bare branches can bear winter. <laughs> Nestled in the northwestern corner of Ohio, Toledo, the glass city once known for making jeeps and of course glass, has faced challenges associated with many Rust Belt cities. Blight, brought on by population shrink, commercial deinvestment, and the isolation of working class neighborhoods via bridges and underpasses. The reasons are as complex as the city and its people. The impact of neoliberalism in a more globalized world, issues related to white flight, urban sprawl, and the use of on-ramps and off-ramps in urban spaces to segregate the classes. Generally, when we think of bridges, we think of things that connect, but in cities, they can also be things that divide. Anialuba defines colonialism as the conquest and control of other people's land and goods. But colonialism in this sense is not merely the expansion of various European powers into Asia, Africa, or the Americas from the 16th century onwards. According to Lumba, it has been a recurrent and widespread feature of human history. Internal colonialism, a concept we argue is alive and observable in Toledo, Ohio, is a branch of colonial theory that asks questions. Questions about the distribution of wealth and power within a nation state's own borders. It's been explored by the likes of Leo McCard, Pablo Gonzalez Casanova, and Nicholas Thomas, and it asks us to think about how those best associated with wealth also enjoy the best access to the services, funding, and infrastructure provided by local governments. So it was a time for people to stand up for themselves, and you know, Cesar Chavez was doing it. So there is a real a sense of pride in 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 the race, Viva la Raza. So Viva our, you know, our race. And so this is that that's that kind of a movement. So I suppose that the Chicano is a politicized Latino. So you can see how bright the colors are. They're really bold. Yeah, they're yeah. vibrant. Yeah, they're, they're very vibrant. vibrant. The murals you have seen in South End of Toledo are the legacy of the muralist art movement which came to prominence in the American Southwest during the late 1960s. The movement wishes to create positive social change against racism and conflict. At the same time, it inspired the Mexican-American community, specifically young people, to engage in issues of social justice. This form of art, known as social realism, used to portray Mexican history through a mural painting in public spaces and was made popular by some renowned painters like Diego Rivera from the 1920s. With the Chicano movement across the United States emerged a wave of cultural movement among Latino communities who wished to express self-respect, assertive group identity, and values of cooperation. Peruvian-born art activist Mario Torero is a key contemporary student of the muralist movement. Torero believes in the transformative power of art in creating communities and bringing people together. Calling himself an artivist, Torero joined the Chicano movement when very young and has worked as a muralist. He is passionate about teaching young generation how to paint and what painting might express. These colors go together. Unlike people who grew up in Latin America, Latino communities in the United States are facing distinct challenges. In a precarious situation where they are positioned, the Latinos are pushed to an inferior corner by the dominant culture. Like the old South End of Toledo, forgotten and left alone after the economic downturn, sealed in a perpetual otherness, ethnically, culturally, I mean, how is 75 used to 
sort of segregate the city. You were talking about that earlier. Well, I say it's, it, that that freeway comes through. You know, it, it certainly delineates a uh, border there. But you know, you you drive through that, and one side is the barrio, and the other side is not. You know, kind of bare. As far as the buildings, is it a way of saying this is our place, or what are the murals? I think the murals, and, and, and Mario talks about it too. I mean, it's just like it starts a dialogue. You paint a big mural, it starts a dialogue. You know, it's like it's like the starting of a dialogue that actually that actually uh, gets people to to talk about about differences and uh, about their issues. But I, that was one, well, certainly one of our goals. I think another one of our goals was was to to sort of uh, to. To brighten, to do something positive for a neighborhood that's been that's been that's been ignored for a long time, and and sort of like maybe a revitalization project, one mural at a time, and we've been doing it for five years, so now we have twenty murals, and off of that spun off, there's other mural groups now that are painting in other parts of Toledo. Initially used to express the history, culture, and religion of its people. These murals in south end of Toledo maintain its Chicano tradition, but are embedded with new meaning with the collaboration in the creation process. Maria brought people, community members, students, and passersby to hold the brushes and paint, intending to make sense what is happening in this community and what can be done through art. It is also through these murals that we have a chance to witness a reconstruction of Latino identity with multiple non-traditional elements. The voice uttered is not only about Latino community here, but the collaboration of other indigenous people who are colonized by contiguous powers, whose urban planning often works to suppress access to economic resources and capital investment both within and outside the greater community. Dr. Ricketts says in the five years he's been working with the mural project, he's received support in the way of honking horns from pleased citizens and letters of support from neighborhood residents. One such letter came from 15-year-old Tony Castillo, who said, Dear Mr. Gordon Ricketts, you and your helpers turn an old, invisible, boring underpass into the most talked about creation in my neighborhood. I want to thank you so much for doing this for our community and just making the south end of Toledo beautiful again. It is through these mural paintings that people do out here strive to locate a sense of belonging, the distinctive cultural heritage from their ancestors, the marginalized language, the vibrant color, seem to remind them who they are and who they are not. The muralist movement in Toledo is a new colonial process by taking deserted public spaces as canvases, but it is more like a post-colonial resistance to decolonize the self and their identities from identity, imperialism, and the poverty they brought about. We see these vibrant colors and ethnic elements on the wall, uttering a voice for the subaltern, the suppressed, the revitalizing neighborhood, bringing hope to their future. Home is a forgotten recipe, a spice we can find nowhere, a taste we can never reproduce. Exactly.